called Advanced Driver Training School uh, at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn. That school is bringing emergency driver education to high school students at a very low cost. ADTS schools in West Palm Beach, Florida and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania are the next expected to open. Others are in various stages of planning in several cities. 1973 was a good year in other ways. Highway safety films continued to be in demand. A total of 15 films were now available with 8,000 copies in circulation. The HS Highway Safety Foundation researchers train accident investigation teams for other agencies. The foundation is working. Honor has completed special studies concerning mandatory seat belt use and regulations, tire tread, depth regulations, driver vision standards and examination, roadside hazard recognition, alcohol abuse, pedestrian crossing behavior, vehicle factors and accident causation, railroad crossing safety deficiencies, just to name a few. So this, they had a lot of people there that were really, I think, on the right track. Uh, it's unfortunate that, that the foundation folded, and we'll get into that a little bit later. During the year, foundation researchers also were invited to testify before the House of Representatives and state and Senate subcommittees in, con in connection with the Highway Safety Act of 1973. So this was obviously written after that, probably the end of 73. The foundation has supplied information about, about, about many safety problems through correspondence and technical publications in response to hundreds of other inquiries. The addition of a National Safety Town Center also marked 1973 is a good year. The center is a resource and coordinating agency. Safety Town is a child-sized town where children are taught to form safety habits. The foundation provides personnel, guidance, initial material, and guidebooks to cities across the nation which would like to implement a preschool early childhood safety education program. Formerly, there was no one place where communities could address questions about how to start this effective safety program. And that was very exciting. As I said, a lot of this, how we became involved with the Highway Safety Foundation is on video number one, and we'll splice this together. But this to me was uh, very interesting. Actually, I'm reading some of this for the first time. I just read parts of it before. We at the Highway Safety Foundation are working to make 1974 Sammy Davis Jr. Telethon for the Highway Safety Foundation, another success. 20 telethon stations have been selected for televising the second tel telethon, expected to top the Nielsen ratings as it did in New York last year. This year's telethon will be broadcast, uh, will be telecast on June 1st and 2nd. Proceeds from the telethon will enable HSF to accelerate its program to bring programs to bring advanced driver training schools to many more communities uh, at, no, at, low, at no or low cost. In the beginning, when Richard D. Wayman stopped on a dark night to assist an accident vic victim, highway safety was in its infancy. It tooled the work of many people. I think that should be say it took, there's a typo in some of these. It took the work of many people to develop his dream into an effective corporation, responsive to the needs of American motorists. Now, with its 1974 telethon on the horizon, a new day is dawning for the foundation. The telethon will enable the foundation to have its opportunity to bring advanced driver training schools and other programs to the public. Okay. In the past two million, Americans died on highway, on, on our highways, more than in all our foreign wars. But with the help of concerned citizens like you, the Highway Safety Foundation will be successful in June, and that success will usher in a new dawn for safety. Uh, excellently written. I don't know who wrote it. There's no name on it, but I was given a copy. Okay. Now, 
because they said, I'm not going to do. Okay, next we have a stop sign. Remember, before I showed you, we were going to have please stop and read about Safe Town and decided just to use this. And I, I always thanked Fred Vero because it looks so much smarter, much more professional than uh, the other one, plus it's saying a, rever a negative, uh, sending a ne negative message. And this is what we did. Okay, there's what is Safety Town, why safety education, early childhood. And in the center we had pictures. There's pictures. Okay, all taken from the, they were all taken from Bedford. And this one was Safety Town offers excellent opportunities. And then it listed to, for the community, for the children, for the teenagers, for the parents. And then we had comments from parents whose children attended the program. And then on the back, we had a message about Safety Town as a prevention program the address and where to send to the Highway Safety Foundation. Well, this came, this officially, the first copy was on my desk on January 9, 1973. With the little note, it said, go ahead and celebrate. And they had a bottle of Coke on my desk with this. This is the first day the stop sign uh, was printed and it was, uh, believe me, exciting. I know I've used that word a lot, but it was exciting to me after years of trying to get everything professionally done and have a printer do that. Now here is the stationery that the Highway Safety Foundation used. And I'm only showing that to you because I'm going to read some of the people that were involved. Sammy Davis Jr. was honorary chairman. Governor John Gilligan this particular year was the honorary chairman. Let me tell you some of the people that were on the advisory board and that were quite involved. Mario Andretti, many of you know. Richard T. Baker, who was the managing partner of Ernst & Ernst in Cleveland. Roy Campanella from New York. Colonel Carmani, who was uh, superintendent of the Highway Patrol Department. So these were important, important people. Irving Cohen, who was president of the Diplomat Hotel and Country Club in Hollywood, Florida. Nate Dolan, remember I said he was the um, owner of the, uh, or part owner, I can't recall which one, of the um, Cleveland Indians, and also involved with a large music company in Cleveland. Mike Douglas, from television, Mike Douglas, he was on there. Um, Maurice Fair, uh, Bert Gukin, I'm going to, Monty, Monty uh, Hall from Beverly Hills. Remember Monty Hall? This man was involved because of Sammy's uh, involvement. Sammy was able to get some of these people involved, as well as Dick Wayman, because he worked with a lot of these people. I'm, I could go down and name a lot more. I'm Charles Spar, who was chairman of the board of Standard Oil. By the way, I also sent him a proposal, um, trying to get him involved with the program. Richard Stewart from Jones Day, a law firm in Cleveland, very good law firm. So there were a lot of important people who served on the advisory board and were involved in this organization. Here is their activity report. I'm going to take this so it doesn't shine. Their activity report from 1973. Now I'm holding this up just so you can see it's very well organized, but I'm going to read a few things to you that they had two offices. They had the executive offices at 13 Park Avenue West in Mansfield, Ohio. Their national headquarters was 1133 Avenue of the Americas in New York. And as I said in the other video, that's where my offices were going to be, had the carpeting all picked out and so forth. But never, never came around. But these are all the people who were involved in the foundation um, in, in 73 and 74 when I was involved with them, 72, 73, 74. President Dick Wayman, 
executive vice president john butler vice president all and he stead the secretary was dolores langford clayton long her blank or edward phelps norman kimball walter mason who was sammy davis is right hand man really stan fields was her publicity person along with dave steinberg and hank meyer and bill warden um, directors and public relations were frank lajak harry kodinsky george taylor and research as i mentioned was herb lanker and will sachs and, and they had uh, different divisions of, of people quite all kinds of for the trans training schools for the legal advisors they just had all kinds of uh, they just had a lot of a lot of people involved okay now I just want to make sure that there's nothing in here this is what they were submitting they used this I believe uh, as from 1973 they compiled this as a result of the, of the telethon and what they accomplished so they could um, make a request for a telethon Telethon in 1974, and these are a lot of the letters. Uh, Highway Safety Foundation cooperated with the Greater Hartford JCs in sponsoring the first Sammy Davis Jr. Greater Hartford Gulf Open on August 31st through September 3rd, 1973, in Hartford, Connecticut. Now that was um, a lot of people don't know that that's how that started, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Greater Hartford is still a very large tournament. Okay, and Sammy was involved. And now here's a picture of Sammy with, for publicity for the Greater Hartford Open. Okay. Uh, this is from the American Mo Motorcycle Association. These are all letters they said that they were preparing to give to the people in New York and show them what they did from 73 to 74 and why they needed another telethon in 1974. Okay. Let me put this on the side right here for right now. Up oh, under the picture. Okay, now we even made the book in here. Let me bring this back here. This is a um, little brochure they put out on us on, on Safety Town. And it says, uh, there's a little Safety Town little girl with, waiting with the traffic light. Okay, it just says, uh, the employees of the Highway Safety Foundation um, are working together to have another a, another a successful endeavor, endeavor rather, uh, coming to take place. The center will be under the direct leadership of Dorothy Schlatt. The center will provide personal guidance, so forth. So, tell us some information on that. Okay, more green light. This is all about please, what we were going to do with the funds in 1974. Okay. What I did along with this, I sent a letter to Johnny Carson, uh, trying to get as much publicity to, to promote the telethon and see if they would be involved in any way. Dear Mr. Carson, as you are probably aware, accidents on our highways claim more lives and injure, injure more people every year than were lost in the Vietnam War. Eleven years ago, I organized and directed a program in Bedford, Ohio called Safety Town. This is a preschool safety education program designed to teach youngsters on all facets of safety, covering traffic, fire, recreational, home, playground safety. Since then, I have organized over 40 additional safe towns in various communities and the concept I develop has grown to national proportions. 
I was feature I was a featured speaker of the National Safety Council in Chicago and have lectured and, and presented demonstrations throughout the country. This year, thanks to a telethon by Sammy Davis Jr., the National Highway National should be the Highway Safety Foundation raised sufficient funds in 1973 to enable me to establish a National Safety Town Resource Center whose function will be to provide information and assist to communities who, to start a program. And then I explain what Safe Town is a miniature program and what their children do. I believe that exposure on a national show such as yours would do a great deal to promote this extremely important, valuable program and provide a great community service. I have a short film illustrating the program plus descriptive literature. I would greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk to someone on your staff about the possibility of appearing on your show and in spite of a limited travel budget would be willing to pay my own travel expenses. Thanking you in advance for your consideration on this matter, I remain Dorothy Schlatt. I don't have the letter with me, but I did get a response back from Mr. DeCordova, I believe his name was, his uh, producer, director, uh, telling me that they have to make sure that the show was entertaining, uh, not just informational, that they were more a night entertaining. And you have to remember back in the 70s, safety wasn't, wasn't very popular. Uh, not on the meet with the media anyway, and um, so I even suggested to him that we would bring Clancy on uh, and and show some magic tricks. We were also going to have on the telethon in 1974. We were going to have Ronald McDonald involved with that. Is that's explained on the video number one, and we thought maybe Ronald could come on and or even. Ronald or, or Johnny Carson could play like the dumb role, be doing something wrong, and Clancy would show him how to, to make it entertaining, but it still, we still couldn't convince him to have it on, so we didn't. But I also, what I had to do for this book, I remember this book was submitted, uh, was going to, to the telethon authorities, theater authorities, which is a telethon group, to approve our telethon for 1974. So I had to get some letters from our safety town people. And here's a letter from Phyllis Manning, who was president elect of Pilots International. And Pilots International um, did our program. Just a minute. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm back. New hairdo, new outfit, new voice, a little bit of a voice, and we'll continue. Today is um, January 23rd. Missed a couple of days, quite a few days in between, but we'll continue is um, just where we left off. Okay. <clears throat> I think we were talking about a letter from Pilot Club International from Phyllis Manning. This is this wonderful book that was put together of the 1973 activities of the Highway Safety Foundation. I think I showed you this before. And uh, each section had um, information on each of the projects that the Highway Safety Foundation was doing, the defensive driving course in the movies and uh, evasive maneuvers and, of course, Safety Town. But we had to get uh, letters, of course. Always have to get letters to substantiate your work. And this was a letter from Phyllis Manning. And she was our coordinator uh, in Arizona. And she was also president-elect in 1973 of the Pilot Club International, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Her letter to Mr. Butler was, uh, simply as a member of the Pilot uh, organization in Arizona, may I say how delighted I was to hear that the Highway Safety Foundation has established a National Safety Town Center. The center will certainly enable organizations throughout the United States to build safety towns and to provide assistance and guidance and materials which has not been available in the past. Please be assured that our, our organization will continue to be involved in the Safety Town program and will assist in the promotion of the program in any way possible. Uh, at the state tragic meeting 
November 7th and 8th in Tucson. Uh, Dorothy Schlad uh, shared with us information uh, about the program, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. Please continue to promote this important educational and worthwhile program in teaching preschool children about safety, about the importance of safety, Phyllis Manning. Then I also have a letter from Dean Childs, who was Safety Program Manager of Traffic Engineer and Safety Department at that time from uh, with the American Automobile Club, and this was dated November 6, 1973. Dear Dorothy, I enjoyed meeting with you last month regarding the National Safety Town Center. It would have been nice to have had a chance to chat during the National Safety Congress. Unfortunately, I missed the opportunity. The realization of the National Safety Town Center must be quite exciting to you. We at AAA wish you and the center success. We are looking forward to reviewing the books that you are writing, and I would like to notify our clubs of the establishment of the center as soon as you get your operation underway. That was great, considering the problems I had with the local Cleveland Automobile Club, the National AAA was very supportive. And this is then is just um, copies of the Safety Town brochure that we had in here. This is a, it's with any, any manual or information you put together, it takes a lot of time to put it together as to uh, all the bits and pieces of it, okay? Now, the next uh, letter, oh, I'm not going to read all the letters, of course, just the ones that I feel have prime importance and, and to give you some idea of what we really had to go through to get this program and the organization off the ground. Okay, I, when I look through this, I, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> Must have been four people inside of me working at all different times because I don't know how I had the energy to do it. Okay, this is a letter on November 30th, 1973. We sent, uh, oh, I don't have the list, but I know we sent several hundred of these out to uh, safety consoles and, um, oh, all of our, here's the list in the back, to all, see how, see how uh, organized we were? This went to our safety towns throughout the country, Alabama, California, Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Iowa, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Michigan, and so forth. All that we had safety towns in 1973, and there were, I would say, probably a, over 100. And um, we also sent them to safety councils and other safety organizations to let them know what we were doing. It started off, Dear Safety Town Collie, the Highway Safety Foundation, a nonprofit organization, is proud to announce the opening of National Safety Town Center. The center will officially open January 2nd, 1974, and is in the process of printing materials and doing promotional work and so forth. Okay, the center will serve as a coordinating and resource agency and will promote the Safety Town programs, media, national, uh, statewide, local, and, and uh, na national, statewide, and at the local level and it, as well as various conventions. Each state will have a safety town chairman, which we later changed to coordinator because I liked the word of coordinator better. I think I talked about that before. And, we'll, and they will assist in, in helping to promote uh, and set up the program in local communities and coordinate all the activities. The center is pr presently working in several areas to promote this program and assist personnel. Number one, we're arranging coverage in national magazine, promoting safety town through the news media and conventions having Sammy Davis Jr. make promotional tapes explaining the program, preparing for national television coverage June 1st and 2nd during the Highway Safety Foundation Telethon, compiling a newsletter which will be sent periodically to keep you informed of new developments uh, as well as to present and detailed report of the center's activities. Preparing a packet of six guidebooks <laughs> will be available after January 2nd. These books are uh, on the following subjects, the general information, organizational curriculum, instructor, parent, and activity. Uh, we are planning it to update an accurate up-to-date file on each safe town in the United States and to provide with pictures and information to describe various safety towns. This I wrote. These are things that have my signature. It took a lot of time and detail to write it. Along with this, we sent, uh, there's a PS here which I forgot, uh, encloses a questionnaire. We hope you will take a few moments to, to uh, fill out, give us your ideas and suggestions on what you would like the National Safe Town Center, uh, how it would like 
you would like it to assist you. And here are, again, four pages back to back, or two pages, four sides, I guess. Name of the safe to town, do you charge a registration fee? How large is your setup? Who maintains your facility? Uh, does your outdoor equipment stay outside or inside? Remember, this went back from some of the letters we received earlier who wanted all this information. One is your safe town operation, the age of your ch the children. Um, do parents view any of the movies with the children? Are parents allowed to participate? How much time do you use on, on, spend on demonstrations? What percentage of time is spent in the classroom? What percentage of time practicing on safety town? Just on and on and on. Do you hold a training, excuse me, do you hold a training session for your instructors? Um, please explain the amount of community involvement. Please just name and address of the person who's the uh, coordinator for your community and so forth. And please give your opinion on other things. So these are all things that, in, again, uh, I'm just, this is all factual. It, you know, nobody, I didn't have a staff to work with. This was, my brain just working. Uh, I'm not saying I didn't get ideas from other people, um, but I would have to say uh, between, <laughs> I don't know, I want to say 90, at least 95% of it came from this brain and this hand uh, working on it together. That's the only way I can explain it to you uh, and be accurate. Okay, that was a very nice one. Okay. Now, this is uh, a letter, no, not a letter, it's another packet that was sent out. And this was sent out again to inform people of not only what Safety Town did, what the Highway Safety Foundation was doing, advanced driver training. Uh, here for Safety Town, it said, as mentioned earlier, traffic de death today ranks as the number one killer of, of the young. Recognize the importance of early childhood safety education program. The Highway Safety Foundation is cooperating with the Ohio Department of, of Highway Safety, has established a safe town center in the foundation, at the foundation's national headquarters in Mansfield, Ohio. The center is designed to motivate and guide various communities in establishing and supporting safety town. Under these programs, all types of safety conditions are introduced. Uh, explains a little about the program. And um, in 1973, Highway Safety Foundation held its first nationwide telethon hosted by Sammy Davis, Jr. The first the foundation's uh, telethon was telecast by 52 TV stations and viewed in hundreds of cities across the nation. Okay, I wish we could have a copy of that video somewhere. I don't know where it is, if it's even available. But um, this is another piece of, piece of material that I had to put together and worked on. And what's nice about this, and I forgot about some of this, just found this. Here's a nice... Um, letter from Sammy Davis Jr., which was the, the last page, and it was on the heavier card stuff, so it would hold up nicely. And it said, The Shocking Waste of Life, Health, and Prosperity. And, I'm sorry. The Shocking Waste of Life, Health, and Property. Traffic accidents have already claimed approximately 2 million lives. This year, 60,000 American men, women, and children will perish in traffic mishaps. That's 160 victims every day of the year, one death every nine minutes. In addition, over 2 million Americans will suffer serious and disabling injuries. The economy loss resulting from the projected 16 million accidents in the United States this year will exceed a staggering $46 billion. This is what we had to start talking to corporations about so they could understand what, what we're talking, because selling safety wasn't that important to them. We had to translate this into dollars and cents to them. This is equivalent to an annual bill of about $150 for every man, woman, and child in America or about $400 per motor vehicle in use. Obviously, a substantial reduction in auto accidents would generate a reduction in auto insurance cost. And what price tag can be put on grief, agony, and suffering? Thank you for helping to save lives, Sammy Davis, Jr. And it's a national chairman of the Highway Safety Foundation. Did not know we had that, but that's going to go in our make a copy and get on our file. And along with that, we sent one of our safety town brochures. And of course you saw that it explains, uh, has the pictures, explains what safety town is, and it has all the pictures. And then it, where to send for information. Okay, <coughs> I'm, again, I'm, I'm still going in sequential order by the dates. 
strictly with the Highway Safety Foundation. Uh, later on in this pile, we'll get back to what I did with the Department of Highway Safety, but I wanted to keep this all together, the continuity of this, of what, of some, not certainly not all, but of some of the things that transpired during these two years at the Highway Safety Foundation. So when we have this combined with the video number one as to some of those tragedies um, that we encountered, hopefully it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. This is a letter I wrote on March 30th to Mr. Will Sachs, who I, as I said, I just admire tremendously, a very, very intelligent man. Uh, this was after I met him. Um, you have no idea of what a great feeling it was for me to finally talk with someone who really understood and was sincerely interested in the Safety Town program and safety in general. After the many phonies I have met through the years, I was beginning to doubt the ex existence of any real people in the safety field. And I really felt that because so many people just wanted, asked for needless information or, or um, just didn't seem interested said they wasted their time and uh, why can't, uh, you know, they grew up without a program during their childhood, why should we have one now? And from the police departments to the school officials to government agency uh, personnel, it, uh, there was not a warm response. So this man was so enthusiastic that I really was very, very excited with him and his response to my, to my, uh, my feelings and my, my ideas. Okay, now let me see what this one is. Okay, this is July 26th, 1973. This is an important, very important letter um, because it really explains how I got involved with the Highway Safety Foundation and the Department of Highway Safety. This is to John Butler from Will Sachs regarding the State, National Safety Town Center. On July 25th, a meeting was held at the Highway Safety Foundation with Fred, Fred Vero, who was the deputy director under Peter Grady with the Highway Safety Foundation, my boss number two, Pete was boss number one for me, of the Ohio Department of High, Highway Safety, Dick Barbary, who was the department, um, oh, he was, I can't recall what his title was with the Department of Highway Safety, but he was up there, and myself, Dorothy Schlatt. The purpose of this meeting was to resolve a joint undertaking for the establishment of a safety town center. Very briefly, a safety town center includes motivating various communities to establish and support safety town, provide guideline materials for the same, providing support material where applicable, distri uh, distributing uh, collective procedures, experience, and, and results, uh, providing at least an annual form for leaders and other personnel at various safe towns to meet exchange ideas. Okay, prior to this meeting, um, there was nothing held like this, <coughs> other than the seminars uh, that I did starting in 1971, but they were very limited. The meeting established the following. The Safety Town Center will be a joint undertaking by the Department of Highway Safety and the Highway Safety Foundation. Okay? Number two. Initial concentration will be within the state of Ohio, wherein the department will be given maximum visibility where materials, regarding the materials, but also the Highway Safety Foundation affiliate recognized as appropriate. Activities external to Ohio will involve the Highway Safety Foundation as the maximum visible, visible agent. I had to be very careful with that because I couldn't take taxpayers' money out of Ohio and go to other states and promote the program. That had to be separate. Very involved. The address of the Safety Town Center will be 13 PAW, which was Mansfield, with stationary with the Safety Town Center heading carrying the following names, Governor Gilligan, State of Ohio, Pete O'Grady, uh, Richard Wayman, President of the Highway Safety Foundation, Sammy Davis, Jr., National Chairman. Number four, Dorothy Schlad will serve as Project Director and be available approximately three days per week at the onset, with her salary, car, and in-state expense carried by the state, so I was not technically an employee of the Highway Safety Foundation. I was on loan to them from the Department of Highway Safety. Uh, Fred Virrell will, uh, will Sachs will serve as advisor and scientific liaison and do not anticipate much time required after the first month of the project. 
Initial new cost will involve printing of various guideline materials, which for startup cost should be less than $3,000. However, as there will be modest fee for these materials, they should return HFS, Highway Safety Foundation cost. <coughs> so that was how it was established. Okay, very, very, again, very important information. Okay, now here's the letter, August 2nd. 1973. This is to uh, Eugene O'Grady from Fred Vero. Dorothy Schlad, Dick Barbary, and I met with Will Sachs on July 25th. Now he's following this up to, to Pete O'Grady. Uh, several conclusions were reached. It would be a joint effort. The Highway Safety Foundation would publish about 500 books, costing about $2,000. Three, Dorothy to finish her books per schedule to be sent to me. She needs about two weeks of uninterrupted days. These were the six guidebooks. Four, the books will, as finished will be delivered to Will Sachs for review. Okay. Highway Safety Foundation will serve as a distribution point for the books and materials which are developed. Seven, uh, he will continue, Will Sachs will continue Dorothy's time and effort. Highway Safety Foundation to pay for any out-of-state travel as per the agreement. Okay, Dorothy to prepare a time schedule consistent with her duties as a field representative with respect to the media contest and the FAIR program. So I still had to do my work with the Highway Safety Foundation. I was only three days a week with this and two days a week doing my field representative in my fairs and doing safety belt demonstrations and so forth. I had to wear many, many hats. Now is the good time before the stage fair to really push the organizational phase of the Safety Town program. Ultimately, the Highway Safety Foundation would assume complete responsibility for the Safety Town Institute, now the Kong Institute instead of SAF. Um, it would, fees would cover cost. It would be national in scope after stressing organizational within Ohio. Attached is Dorothy's proposal on this subject. Another proposal. Now, this is very important. <laughs> Fred said, Dorothy t tends to get over-involved in the ongoing Safety Town pr projects to the de detriment of initial organizing organizational efforts. I intend to try to channel her efforts at the present into producing the books, other materials, and, up, and outline the program. As soon as this is complete, we will need a promotional plan for total departmental involvement. And that's what I was trying to tell them. If the reason I had to work with the ongoing people is I was getting requests for them, and they had to set up, and they're saying, no, you have to, you have to work with the media, you have to work with the finish the books, and you have to work with this. And I had to spread myself real thin. And, um, he was right, but that to me was the most important thing. I had to work with the people that were interested in doing the program. Okay. Uh, this is not of importance. This is not of importance. We'll put this in here. We can do that. Am I going in the right direction with that? Okay. Now, this is just one of these sidelines I'm going to interrupt from. I said this is all Highway Safety Foundation work. This one was not, but it was a special event, and I, because it, goes in with the dates, follows in sequential order. This was September 14, 1973. This was held at the Cleveland Plaza Hotel in Cleveland, Ohio. The Women's Democratic Club of Cuyahoga County presented a salute to women in politics. I was asked by the governor, Governor Gillingen, uh, to represent him, and I gave a plaque to two ladies, Helen Lyon, who was the clerk of the Cleveland Municipal Court, and Margaret Mahoney, who was an attorney. Uh, they were retiring, and I presented them a plaque on behalf of the governor. I also presented a paper on the 10, uh, 10, uh, 10 topics of women in politics. And um, what was interesting about this is there were, oh, I think, oh, I don't know, I would say 600, five to 600 people in the room. Uh, and it, while it was the Women's Democratic Convention, mostly women, there were some men in the room. I was at the top tier of, of the uh, dais, and on my right was Dorothy Fulheim, and on my left was Senator Metzenbaum's wife, and he was in the audience, Senator Howard Metzenbaum, our senator from Ohio. So I was in the middle of some nice company. 
Dorothy Fulheim, for those of you who are not from Ohio, from the greater Cleveland area, uh, was a television newscaster in Cleveland for many, many, many years. She was, I think, one of the pioneers. I think she was on television for 45, 50 years, it seemed like. But, uh, and she died, I think, when she was 92. We ate a lot of chocolate. I uh, was just a, a very, very nice lady. And, um, but she interviewed uh, Khrushchev and, and oh, just all kinds of important people around the country, around the world. So she was a very, very noted person. And she spoke, and then I had to follow her speaking, which I thought was, uh, and, and I held my own. I thought it was, I, I did very well. Everyone was real. Well, uh, plays. Of course, her her um, topics were always about world situations, and then she would add her own little set, her humor. I remember this particular day we had to wait for them to set up, so we were in what they called the green room. Dorothy Fulheim and myself, and and Shirley Metzenbaum and some of the other people. And um, Dorothy Fulheim was sitting there, and she had her feet on a little stool. She was four foot eleven, I think, uh, most. And uh, we were talking about height, and she said when she dies, she wants to be reincarnated and come back as a six-foot-tall woman with five feet of legs. And, and we all chuckled. And I don't know who asked why, and she said, uh, we said, why, why do you want to do that? And she said, have you ever seen a man? He starts at the bottom at a woman's legs, and he'll go up. And he, she said, I'm so short, they're at the top of my head, and they don't see anything. He, I want them to look all the way up and see these five-foot legs and then see this body. And I thought that was the cutest thing. But uh, my presentation went very well, and Senator Metzenbaum actually came up afterwards to me and uh, uh, complimented me, and so did many other people. Uh, and here's just my notes of some of the topics I touched on, on um, uh, how to be successful. I, I wish I could remember the exact, uh, I'll find it somewhere, the exact uh, title of my program. But uh, it, it's know how. It, I told people not to be a little bug in the rug, and I used that from, of course, Paul Bla Blasdale's presentation. Know how to stimulate people, know how to get people to do what you want them to do, but because they want to do it. That's my favorite one. Uh, don't be just statistically oriented. Have some knowledge behind and experience and adjust to your, your situations. Don't just criticize people. Have alternative plans to correct things. Be open-minded for suggestions. Uh, people are not machines, and you are a woman. Uh, and I, I close by saying that I, in the Department of Highway Safety, would be happy to help any woman do anything to further their, their career, but before they contacted me, make sure they had experience, make sure they did all their necessary homework, don't come to me and say, I'm a woman and I want a job. Uh, do your homework and make sure you're qualified for whatever position you want to be in. Okay, so that's the end. That was fun. That was a nice, fun event. <clears throat> now, November 2nd, 1973, this is to, to Dick Bar Barbary from Fred Vero. Please release Dorothy Schlad to attend the Arizona traffic meeting, which was called Tragic, was for young people, on November 6th, 7th, 8th of 1973. The Highway Safety Foundation will pay this bill. Okay, now, when I went out there, I, this is something we had to do for the Highway Safety Found, uh, for the Ohio Department of Highway Safety and the Highway Safety Foundation. I had to do a daily report of what it is I did. So this is my report from 11.5 through 11.16. I'll just do it very quickly. On Monday, I drove to Mansfield to pick up the check for the Arizona trip. I drove from Cleveland to Mansfield. Talked with John Butler and Herb and Frank regarding the trip. Later in Cleveland, I met with George, George Brown from Penn Haymaker to go over the pencil copy of, of the ad. Uh, the next day, I flew to Tucson, Arizona and that set up there, set up the display. On Wednesday the 7th was our big display. Uh, talked with Opal Abel, who was our coordinator out in Arizona, along with Phyllis Manning. And the three of us hit it off very well. And uh, they wanted me to be the speaker in 1975 at their 
Pilot International Convention. And we set up the, the room and did a, just an excellent job of taking the kids around. Uh, again, we have pictures and hopefully I'll have them into the next thing. Then on, uh, that was on um, Wednesday and Thursday we had to do the show. Uh, on Wednesday, I'm sorry, Thursday I did to, um, I went to the Tucson Daily Citizens newspaper, met with the newspaper with Pamela York there. Uh, she was young and very pleasant. We got along beautifully. Later went to KOLD TV. I just walked in cold. Just found out where these are. Looked in the telephone book. Went in and went in cold with these people. And talked with David Reben, host of Tucson Today. Set up a time for tomorrow. We did a half hour show. Uh, spent the rest of the day talking with various representatives. Sent Pamela New York a thank you note. The next show, I, next day I did a TV show at WKOLD TV. Then went to Phoenix, met and talked with young Arizona uh, representatives there. And met with a gal from the Phoenix Republic for an article there. The next day went to Yuma by bus. Uh, talked with people regarding safety towns in Yuma. On Sunday, talked with the ladies at the luncheon, and just on and on, it just constant, that type of thing. Worked a lot. Okay, here is the um, schedule of the Tat Town. Uh, we, they called it a Tat Town uh, because it was for the little ones demonstration that we did. It was on on that uh, Wednesday I mentioned. Okay, November thirtieth, nineteen seventy three. Let me get all my papers together, they're not stapled together. Listen, I'm delighted after all these years I can find a lot of these papers. Okay, um, the center will serve, um, in fact, I think we re re already, oh, this is another one we sent out. It's basically the same letter, but we sent this out to um, additional act. Uh, organizations to let them know what we were doing, the Highway Safety Foundation, uh, a nonprofit will, <coughs> will open, <coughs> excuse me, is proud to announce the opening of the National Safety Town Center, what the functions are, and we're going to arrange coverage in national magazines, promote safety town through the media, and have Xami make the um, tapes and all that, so that uh, basically is the same. Different, we sent to different organizations, basically the same letter. Okay, now this is a letter that we sent to um, people who responded to any advertising, whether it's in newspaper or through the Penn Haymaker Wayne Corporation ad. Uh, it says, congratulations, you have just embarked on a wonderful, rewarding, and exciting adventure, the founding of a safety town for your community. Uh, after you become familiar with the six guidebooks, should you have any questions, just call us and explain the six guidebooks and more information and again I sat and put that all together. Okay. This is to John Butler from Stan Fields. This is December thirteenth, nineteen seventy three. Now remember Stan Fields was Sammy Davis's PR man. And his office was at eleven thirty three Avenue of the Americas in New York and that's where offices my office was going to be in conjunction or adjacent to his. Uh, it was very nice. Had the carpeting picked out and furniture and had lots of that all done, but just didn't come. But anyway, he sent this letter to uh, John Butler. In a conversation with Beverly Roberts this morning, I learned how impressed she is with Dorothy Schlad and the entire Safety Town concept. In fact, she seems to consider it at least as important as our advanced driver training effort and perhaps even more so. She said she would like to see it expanded to a teenage level so that the training we impart could be made to pay off at a visible level. So, uh, just, uh, when I look back and think of some of these people, they, these were some of the cream of the crop of people in New York. When, when you hear some of these names, uh, I just can't believe it with the media and like Beverly Roberts, I just can't believe that we had so much going for us, and unfortunately, because of some political problems with the Highway Safety Foundation um, and the political parties, it just fell apart. Just sad, really, really sad, and which I didn't know at the time because I was so wrapped up in the program. This is a um, 
a letter I wrote to Stan Fields December 14th, just simply saying it was a delightful pleasure for me to meet you in New York at the Highway Safety Foundation opening of the Advanced Driver Training Course. I thoroughly enjoyed talking with you and greatly appreciate the time you so generously afforded me. I always wrote letters to people, uh, and I did this on my own. I still didn't have a secretary. Uh, I'm very sorry you didn't have the opportunity to do the Safety Town film because the film would have made you better acquainted with the program, but he understood what I was doing. Having an excellent program is not going to benefit others unless we can inform the public about its availability. Would it be more feasible to meet privately with magazine representatives or several representatives in one large room? And I just ask them all kinds of questions on how to promote this. <clears throat> okay, uh, that's the same letter, another copy. Now, uh, when we were in New York, as I said, we were in New York for the opening of a um, advanced driver training school on the skid control. And these are just Sammy Davis Jr. dedicates first center, and uh, December, this was in December 12, 1973. And here are just some of the articles. And again, we'll do this much nicer when we can zoom in on some of these things. <coughs> now, here are some of the people I wrote to. Um, Mr. Steve Riddle, this is December 17, 1973, of the Teamster Union, number 299 in Detroit, Michigan. May I say, on behalf of the Highway Safety Foundation, we appreciate your taking time from your busy schedule to attend our meetings to learn more about our activities and our organization. It was so nice to meet and talk with you in Detroit at the Highway Safety Foundation meeting recently. Uh, we just, I traveled all over. <laughs> You are a very delightful person. I'm only sorry I could not stay longer to talk more in detail about our mutual concern for safety and the truck drivers. Next time in Detroit, I'll plan to stay longer. I sincerely hope that you can obtain permission from your newsletter to allow me to briefly inform your membership of the availability of the excellent program called Safety Town. This will enable your members, no matter where they live, to help organize a program in their community so all children can benefit from the program. Only through concerned people like you can we inform our people of the importance and value of Safety Town and safety in general. So I had, had constantly was doing that type of promotional. Here's Marsha Bliss Marks, Editorial Department of Women's Day. Again, it was a delightful pleasure to meet and talk with you. Uh, said I had a terrible headache here. I remember have, I used to get some very bad headaches. Uh, I will be on vacation during a certain time, but I would like to meet with you any, any time possible to prepare an article for Women's Day, which they did. Dear President, now this letter from the Highway Safety Foundation, okay, and it had all the people, all the board of directors on the back. I think we discussed those before. I sent this letter to every JC chapter in the United States. It said, Dear President, a national public relations firm, Penn Haymaker, a division of Wayne Corporation, is putting together information for a May or June article in the Future magazine on the various JC chapters that sponsor safety towns throughout the United States. They would like each chapter to send a few pictures of their safety town layout and pictures involving the community, such as a sp a sponsoring a party for their teens or so forth. I think this is an excellent opportunity for every local chapter involved in the Safe Town Program to let everyone know what you are doing uh, and so forth. So we sent this to, uh, I don't know how many, several hundred safe, uh, JCs, uh, some who had safety towns and those who did not. Okay. Now, this is. The ad, <clears throat> I think we've talked about it before, but I didn't think I had a picture of it, and I do now. This is the ad that Wayne, the Wayne Corporation, through the advertising company of Penn Haymaker in Cleveland, Ohio, with George Brown. This is the ad that they put in. Okay, this was the first, first page. And then this wonderful, wonderful spread. Isn't that great? And then it had a picture of their safe bus on the back. Now, 
with each one of this, this was an insert in there, okay? They were to put their name, address, and phone number, and they would receive, it says, I'm interested in organizing and building a safety town in our community. Please mail further information. They sent this in to the Highway Safety Foundation. The Highway Safety Foundation was going to send them the six guidebooks because that's what they had agreed to do with the telethon. The monies that came in from the telethon, they were going to pay for the books and send these out free. And of course, when the telethon fell through and people already had, had this information but no books, that's when Frank and I had to take, I think it was, I don't know, six or $8,000 loan on our house to get these books out and send them to the people to keep the program going. Also, what Wayne did, if you see these ponchos, they made these ponchos available. I just wish I would have kept one. You can see the little logo on them, but I wish I would have kept one poncho. I think they sold them for $1. We sold them $1 to the local communities uh, to give to the kids. I'll have to find some information on that. But they were darling little ponchos that Wayne Corporation made up. Just a rain, just rain ponchos that the parents could send their kids to school with. And here is a letter that was signed by Leo J. Cabot, who was the president of the Wayne Corporation. And when we, when I first went there to meet with this gentleman and his people, this is one of the nicest men I think I ever met. Um, he was just so cordial, so helpful, uh, treated me very nicely. We ate at the country club with with all of his staff and people. Uh, just a, very, very nice and very warm. And it says, "We are pleased to we are pleased to know you are interested in the safety town. It's good to know you feel as we do about safety of children. This year, the Wayne Youth Movement is focused on safety town." Last year it was directed to encouragement of educators and people involved in school transportation to submit ideas on how to make school bus buses safer. The introduction of the lifeguard school bus last year prompted our initiating the Wayne Youth Movement. As a result, Wayne and child safety are now synonymous. Our intent is to continue to develop youth movement programs that will initiate and support other programs to help assure the, the safety of children, whether they're riding in school buses or walking down the street. That's why we are promoting Safety Town, why we are urging people, public-spirited people, to organize Safety Town in their communities. All of us at Wayne are extremely gratified because of our interest in Safety Town. Gratified to know that perhaps in a few months your community will have a Safety Town where your children can and will, and will learn positive safety attitudes that will hold them in good stead today and for years to come. Leo Kevin present. That, that was great. These are, as I said, we had some top of the people top-of-the-line people involved with our program. And if it would have only stayed together, we would have been fabulous. Okay. This is a letter uh, I wrote to Dick Barbary. I take this as handwritten um, after I met him. Dear Dick, it was a real pleasure to meet and talk with you in New York. You are a delightful person with a great sense of humor who certainly made the trip much more enjoyable. He had an ear infection and he could never fly, so he had a big mobile home, um, not mobile, I guess it was a trailer at that time, but he had his studio in there and everything in there. It was just excellent. I would like to say how very pleased I am to be affiliated not only with you, but the entire highway safety staff. As I stated at the National Safety Council meeting in Chicago, no one would spend so much of his personal time and money if he were not sincerely dedicated and concern to the prevention of accidents and eliminating the needless, needless pain, grief, and sorrow that so many people suffer yearly. Please be assured that I will devote as many hours as possible to promote the Safety Town program to the National Safety Town Center. I know the results of this program. I have seen and heard the parents, teenagers, and children's enthusiastic response, positive response, and comments. Safety Town will be the topic of the nation for the next few years. I will help you, I will keep you abreast of proposal plans, completed projects by sending you a monthly report. Again, lots, lots of work. Okay. Uh, November 7, 1973, while I was in Tucson, Arizona, I sent this letter to Mr. Deeg, Mr. and Mrs. Deeg. He was the president of the Veterans of Safety. 
just keeping him abreast of what I was doing in, in Arizona. And again, I wanted to thank him for being so nice to me, for he and his wife taking to his room and um, consoling me after I was so upset after the Highway Safety Foundation through all those, um, what do I want to say, and all those nails at me and um, shot holes in me, is the, I guess the word is the phrase I'm looking for. But I said, I will never forget what you did for me, and I greatly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Okay? And this is a letter from Agnes Beaton from the National Association of Women Highway Safety Leaders. She's, she was, I think, the original person involved with this. And she said, uh, November 9th, it was such a pleasure to have you in Washington for the recent National Association of Women Highway Safety Leader Conference. Your warm, sunny smile adds so much to the success of any meeting. In closes a photo taking during the conference. We thought you might like to have it for your scrapbook. I don't know what, where it is, but I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. But very nice lady. This is from Elvira Davis, December 17, 1973. This is Sammy Davis Jr. Jr.'s mother. Uh, this is to her, a letter to me, from her, from me to her. I, I have her address at that time. She lived at uh, 370 East 76th Street, apartment B402, New York, New York. And I had the opportunity, as, as I mentioned on video number one, to be taken there in the limousine and pick her up and explain to her uh, what she had to do because Sammy could not attend the um, opening of the event that we have, and she substituted for him. She did a great job. Dear Elvira, what a delightful, uh, she wanted me to call her Elvira, she didn't want me to call her Mrs. Sammy, Mrs. Davis. What a delightful pleasure it was for me to meet you. You were so very charming and gracious, and I thoroughly enjoyed talking with you during our limousine ride. It was so nice of you to take time from your busy schedule to share experience with us. Your presentation was very well given and warmly received. I am very, I am sure every parent there could identify with the grief and pain you encountered during Sammy's accident. Your involvement in our organization, plus your serving as New York chapter chairman, is going to be a tremendous asset to us in organizing our chapters. It is so generous of you to give your time and effort to help others. You are truly a dedicated and concerned person, and only through the efforts of people like yourself. Can we be successful in preventing accidents to our fellow man? I am eagerly looking forward to working with you in the near future. I sincerely wish you and your family a very happy holiday season. P.S. I have not heard anything about Sammy, but I hope and pray that by the time you get this letter, he is recovered and the best of health again. He was unable to attend because he was failing with his health. However, we also heard that one of the reasons he probably the reason he could not make the trip, and as other people on the entourage did, um, and Sammy always traveled with the entourage of people, his makeup people, his hair stylist people, um, food people, whatever, but he always had several rooms uh, for these people, which was paid for by the Highway Safety Foundation. But he went to get on the plane, from what I understand, with his bodyguard and his bodyguard's gun the license, the permit had expired two weeks earlier, so they wouldn't let him on, and Sammy wouldn't go on either, and that's why Sammy never made the trip. And uh, we thought he was ill, he might have been ill as well, but I think that was the major reason. January 18, 1974. Okay, this is, I wrote this to Mr. Paul Blasdale. Now, you remember this man I met about two years ago when I was speaking at the National Safety Council, and he said, don't wait, young, don't wait, 20 years for research to tell you what you already know, and that's when I got so excited. So here's my uh, follow-up letter to him. Dear Mr. Blasdale, it has been over two years since we last discussed the relevant problems facing the world. In fact, you probably won't recognize my name, but you might remember the situation. In 1971, you spoke at the National Safety Congress, and then I reiterated the, the inc incident. During our discussion, you gave me many ideas and suggestions. However, you gave me one idea that is responsible for not only the reality of the center, but for my being director consultant. You said, young lady, don't wait 10 years for research to tell you what you already know. 
if you have the experience, knowledge, and ability, by God, go ahead, sell your program, and put it into operation. He has, I haven't heard 10 years, I thought he told me 20 years. Uh, but it must be 10 if I wrote it. You have no idea of how many, many times I remember that comment that gave me the shot in the arm that I needed to pick myself back up after the many discouraging remarks I had been told previously. I will be in New York February 6th, 7th, and 8th, and would like very much to meet with you, not only to, to discuss the center, but to present you with a complete set of guidebooks that I just wrote about Safety Town. Your name is listed under credits to show my deep, deepest appreciation. I realize your schedule is extremely bu busy, but I do hope you can find a minute for our meeting. Okay. And, I'm no, I don't think, I don't remember ever meeting with him again after that. I think it was that's also with that. This is to Dorothy Schlatt from John Butler on January 17th. Uh, he said, your advertisement in the magazine pertaining to Safety Town is excellent. He was very pleased with that. So we worked hard on that. Uh, this is the letter I wrote to Mr. Kevitt, January 22nd, 1974. Dear Mr. Kevitt, I wanted to write and personally thank you for the promotion our Safety Town program received as a result of your advertisement in the nation's schools. George Brown of Penhager Ken Haymaker did a marvelous job in putting the ad together, and it was a pleasure working with such a professional. One point that I'm sure will interest you is the fact that we received over 60 inquiries within one week from the time that issue of Nation's Schools came out. We will send you a complete listing of all the inquiries after other two publications are available. Just a lot of, lot of nice people and a lot of nice work. Okay, that one we don't need. This is another person, Mr. Larry Reach, Associate Editor of the Sunday Group Editorial Services. Sunday Magazine, you get the editorial? This man was in charge of that, and he met with us. Dear Larry, I wrote him a letter. This was February 12, 1974. This was all in preparation for the telethon, which we were going to have in June. Dear Larry, it was a delightful pleasure to meet and talk with you last week. You were so very kind and gracious to support Stan Fields and I so much of your valuable time. I not only enjoyed that delicious seashore lunch you recommended, but thoroughly enjoyed our exchange of ideas and comments. You are an extremely good listener, and I appreciated your attentiveness while I explained the Safety Town program. I get so excited every time I speak, I explain the program, because I have seen and know the results it produces, not only from the preschooler, but the teenage and parents as well. Everyone benefits from Safety Town. My only hope is that I can generate interest and enthusiasm to every community so this program can be made available to every child. That's when I had all that enthusiasm. I just wish I would have done a lot more taping then. I will contact you regarding using your daughter for the telethon as soon as the exact date and times have been set. If you can arrange to have three of her playmates attend with her, uh, it would help me tremendously. Also, it would make all children feel much more relaxed and secure having their friends with them, especially in a new surrounding. Okay, another person, Shelley Engelmeyer, with NANA, uh, National Association of Newspapers uh, Association, something of that type. Again, it was a delightful pleasure to meet and talk with you. And within the next two weeks, my books will be printed, and you can then determine how Safe Time can best fit into the Head Start program and into your publication. D. Wiedemeyer, Associated Press. Dear D, it was a dull pleasure to meet and talk with you last Thursday. You were very kind and gracious to afford me so much of your valuable time. It is very difficult to explain years of experience in all aspects of a program in our interview, but you did an outstanding job of covering so many areas. Again, both of these, all of these people followed up and put had newspaper articles in there. Miss Gay Pauley, women's editor, United Press International. All we had articles in all these all these people followed up with articles. Dear Gay, it was a delightful pleasure to meet and talk with you last Thursday. You were very kind and gracious to afford me so much of your valuable time. And basically the same thing. But just just the top top people in New York. Not just in Cleveland or Mansfield or Columbus, but in New York were doing this going to do this publicity. Well, they did some publicity for us, and they were going to do more. This is a letter I wrote to Beverly Roberts, February 13, 1974. What a wonderful, wonderful woman this was. Um, 
so devoted, so knowledgeable. Very nice lady. Dear Beverly, it was so nice to see and talk with you in New York. I thoroughly enjoyed the cerebral palsy telethon. That's this is when I went in to to observe the telethon, so I'd have some idea of what to do with our telethon. I had to dry my eyes several times when those precious children were on. You certainly ought to be congratulated for your part in making telethon the success that it was. I am sure that everyone affiliated with Highway Safety Foundation would be delighted if our telethon is equal equally as successful. I met with Norm Kimball while in New York, and he gave me excellent ideas for Safe Town Appeals for the telethon. During the next few weeks, I will finalize and forward a copy of these details to you. When I have all the tapes completed and written, intros for Sammy and Monty Hall, I will set up a meeting in New York with you, Norma, and Stanley for your review. Beverly, please be assured that everyone at the Highway Safety Foundation is extremely cooperative, enthusiastic, and working with me on the Safety Town program. I could not ask for better support. They feel, as I do, that the program is extremely important, not only preschoolers, but the teenagers and parents as well. Uh, thank you for your, very much for all you, you've done for me, Safety Town and the Highway Safety Foundation. All of us truly are very grateful. I think I used to write some very, very nice letters, but that's how I always felt. And Norm Kimball was the Cerebral Policy Foundation director, and I sent him a letter because he spent so much time with me giving me ideas on how to think telethon to get people out of their seats while they're watching TV to get them off, get them up from their seat, get them to the telephone and make a bid. <clears throat> okay, this is from uh, February 13th from Stan Fields to me. Dear Dorothy, it was regrettable last Friday's snowstorm caused you to leave New York earlier than scheduled. As a result, we had to forego two interviews, one with newspaper enterprises and another with King Features. I had them sandwiched between 3 and 5 in the afternoon, but I canceled in time to give them, so to keep them from getting upset. I believe I'll generate something with them on my own, or I'll, or I'll set up an in-depth interview with you next time you're in New York. Again, I've got to tell you, you were a, a marvelous interviewer giving these big town editors all they could handle and more. The pertinent information kept flowing and I think we, we should get a lot of good mileage in publications across the country and we sure did. Sorry we couldn't get together before we left so I could say thank you in person. Do try to get back soon. Incidentally I, incidentally, I have your questionnaire retyped and it is enclosed. Okay? That was um, his letter to me on February 15th. I responded, Dear Stan, here I am back in Mansfield after the exciting week in New York. It's a little hard to be content sitting behind the desk after I went to so many lunches and met so many nice people. I really enjoyed meeting and talking with everyone while in New York and spent follow-up and have sent follow-up letters to all expressing my appreciation for the time and interest. I, I especially enjoyed that Shelley. He really did impress me. I could uh, could listen to him talk for hours. He's an extremely interesting and knowledgeable person. My meeting with Norm Kimball was very fruitful and so forth. So, uh, let's see here. I left New York uh, with two unpleasant situations. First, I forgot a dress in my hotel room when I realized it in Providence. I called the Sheraton, but they informed me that they had no knowledge of my whereabouts. Some maid now has a nice $100 dress. Second, my bus trip, normally two hours, took six and a half hours due to the storm. Okay. And here's a letter from Good Housekeeping, February 19, 1975. Alice Gerard. Uh, Dear Dorothy, thanks so much for your kind letter. I enjoyed meeting with you again after our first brief encounter, and lunch was delightful. I plan to discuss your program uh, for Safety Town with one of our featured editors, and I'll be in touch with you as soon as anything as soon as I hear anything. Your enthusiasm is really impressive, Dorothy. It's Safety Town's best-selling point. Hope you and your family are well. And that was, there was an article in Good Housekeeping. February 20th. This is a letter from Stan Fields. Let's see, this is the same thing. Okay. Uh, it says, dear, this is to John, from Stan Fields to John Butler. 
I am pleased to report that my meeting last week with Albert Schenker and the Public Relations Council were very successful. They have agreed to do all we ask, and the only point they want deleted from the letter is the reference to the $2 million pledge. They will supply the names and addresses of the local presidents of, of the unions um, and their school bus drivers. So this was the union bus, bus drivers, I believe, uh, for, the telephone, for the telethon. When I explained how important the bus drivers were to us, especially in light of our Safety Town program, he agreed to write to their leadership and rank and file. He promised he would also try to get the names and addresses of their respective local presidents and memberships for our computer. So because of Safety Town, we were able to uh, tie in with one of the unions for the telephone. They, I think they had some union tie-ins before mine, but that helped with it. This is a letter from Stan Fields to Mr. John Martin of ABC Sports in New York, New York. Dear Mr. Martin, thanks so much for, for your and ABC's willingness to allow the Highway Safety Foundation the use of your wide wool of sports Daytona 4, 450 videotape on our Sammy Davis Junior Telethon, June 8th and 9th of 1974. The show will emanate over WOR TV in New York and will be beamed to approximately 25 to 35 major cities nationwide. That's what was going to happen. Didn't, but it was. This one we don't need. Okay, this is a letter that I sent to Gay Polly. Uh, remember, she's with the, with the, she was woman's editor of United Press International. Just want to write and say thank you for the well-written article you did about Safety Town. They all followed up, and here's the article that appeared. This was the United Press International article, good size article, appeared in all the newspapers around the country that pick up United Press International wire system. Had lots of requests from that. Okay, March 22nd, 1974. This is from Con Conrad Ford, Executive Director of the Police Athletic League. Dear Mr. Butler, I had the pleasure of meeting with your representative, Mr. Jo George Durgan of the Police Athletic League, who is very excited about Safety Town. He plans to work with you in helping to raise funds for this excellent program. And then George Durgan was a very good supporter of ours. Now, remember we said, um, I showed you that little yellow tear out from the uh, Wayne ad people sent to us for information. Well, they sent these back and of course the books hadn't been printed because they had some financial problems, uh, the Highway Safety Foundation did. So we had to send, and we had uh, approximately 3,000 requests that we're sitting on and the books were not going out. So we had to send out this letter to them saying thank you for your inquiry regarding Safety Town because of the tremendous response we have received from the National Advertisement. Our entire first printing has been depleted. A second printing is now in, pro in process and your s set of six guidebooks will be sent to you in approximately six weeks. We are indeed sorry for delay, but, ple but pleased by the enormous response. It is encouraging and rewarding to know so many people are interested in safety education for their young children. So we had to do that. This is February of 1994. I can't recall if this was done a monthly letter or bi-monthly or what newsletter, but this was the Highway Safety Foundation newsletter. And this was going to be the poster child for the Highway Safety Foundation telethon on here. Now, what's exciting about this, here is the, show you, here is the event where I had the opportunity and the pleasure to um, ride in the limousine with Mrs. Sammy Davis, Jr. Okay, I'm back had to get up and answer the telephone and have something to eat for lunch. And now I'm back. Go back to holding this up. Like I said, this is the, the event with Mrs. Sammy Davis uh, Jr. 
uh, Sammy Davis Sr., I guess, Sammy's mother, <laughs> um, Sammy Davis Jr.'s mother, uh, doing the event. Now, what's exciting about this publication is not only was this an excellent event, but on this page, there's the whole, there's my picture, here's me, and there's the whole article about the National Safety Town Center, which was so exciting. And then on the back, there was a picture of Sammy Davis Jr., an article about the upcoming telethon in 1974, and of course, some safety information about their other programs. <coughs> okay, sad, sad, sad. More information. February 28, 1974. This is a letter to Dr. Wagner, Ohio State University, Department of Photography. This is from me. It was indeed a pleasure to talk with you recently concerning the processing of making films. I wanted to again have pictures of films made of Clancy doing his magic tricks, making available to the schools, selling them. I mean, I just saw, uh, I saw, what can I tell you, a Mattel or Fisher Price of safety material if I would have been able to get somebody <clears throat> to give me some money to invest and uh, make some safety materials we certainly would have had. <coughs> Excuse me, a large, large corporation. I didn't know anything about selling uh, stock and shares at that time, but I would have found a way. Uh, this one, this letter is February 28, 1974 to Major Raymond Karzminski of the Mansfield Police Department. Uh, this is again from me, and it says, Saturday and Sunday, Patrolman Joe Shavinsky, who is our Clancy, was involved with our display at the Cleveland Home and Flower Show. Now, you remember Clancy was a police officer for the Mansfield Police Department, and that's how uh, I got to know him. Or he came to the office at the Highway Safety Foundation. We got to meet, and he told me what he did, and that's how we got hooked up together with their organization. He, of course, was dressed... Uh, in his Clancy the Cop outfit and passed out balloons to the children, bicycle information, and safety town information. He did an outstanding job and the crowd just loved him. Many people asked Joe either, uh, many people either asked Joe or myself what he did for a living. Uh, was he a clown all the time? And of course we mentioned he was a police officer, which was a very nice story. I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation to you not only for allowing Patroma Chavinsky to take part in the Cleveland show, but for allowing him the time to film the movie, which we did last week. Okay, so I always, again, send thank you notes, thank you letters. Another letter, this is to Mr. and Mrs. Cardo. Now, uh, Tom Cardo was the young man from Mansfield who was the ventriloquist with Oscar. We have some pictures of him. And he participated in the Cleveland Home and Flower Show, too, and was... Uh, a delight to have the people enjoyed him and we were going to do a movie uh, some movies with him which unfortunately never gelled but I sent a letter to his mom and dad telling them how great he was and how proud they must be of him I also sent a letter to the principal of the senior high school on behalf of Tom telling him that he was there and that he uh, voluntarily gave up his time to come to Cleveland for this. He did not get paid for this particular event, although I did pay for him for the summer because I had committed him. To, I told him I would pay for him to do a summer job. He was looking for a summer job, and I had him attend various safety towns in Greater Cleveland and do his little ventriloquist show, and I personally absorbed that cost myself, or my husband and I, I should say, through our, our many loans from uh, on our house. Uh, this was just Tom did an outstanding job. I was amazed at how he was able to respond to the many questions that were asked, not only from young people, but from teenagers and adults as well. He is a very quick-thinking person and certainly mature for, her age, for his age. There were many times as I sat there observing his demonstration that I really did not know how I would have responded to some of the questions thrown at him. I was very proud of Tom, and I believe he's a fine example of the youth of our nation, and I'm sure that you feel the, the same way. I would like to apologize for the situation we ran to last week in regards to filming Tom and Oscar 
because the electrical problems and several other problems we're not able to fill in town, we will set up a new date next week. Please be assured that we will give credit in the beginning of the film to the Mansfield Board of Education, high school, and your cooperation in putting together the film. I am hopeful that we will be able to find Tom a job for the summer, touring the state and visiting safe towns and putting on his display for the young children throughout the state. And I just mentioned that. Okay. March 27, 1974. This is to Miss Jean Yokes, Program Coordinator, American Nurses Association, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Bruce Armstrong was a member of uh, the Highway Safety Foundation, and he and I went out to California. Um, sorry, out to Kansas City, and met with these people. And he sent a follow-up letter: Dear Jean, Dorothy Schlatt, and I wish to thank you very much for the warm reception you extended during our visit to, with you in Kansas City. I want you to know that the endorsement of the American Nurses Association has agreed to give the Highway Safety Foundation on their four programs makes our job much easier for a successful telethon. The 100 folders you requested with the materials covering the Highway Safety Foundation will be sent to you uh, this week. Dorothy Schlatt will be getting in touch later this week regarding the booth for Safety Town at the American Nurses Association Convention. We had unbelievable, unbelievable entree to so many things. Uh, came so close. I would be looking forward to hearing from the NA, NA Communication Department for our next item. Um, thank you again. Bruce Armstrong was in charge of, of the safety to, of the um, Highway Safety Newsletter. <coughs> okay, now this is to whom it may concern. This is a, um, a letter written by John Butler on June 15, 1974, when they found out the Highway Safety Foundation was folding and I had to go on my own. Uh, I asked John Butler if he would put together a to whom it may concern letter of recommendation for me, uh, which he did very nicely. And he just put in here since July 1970, for, since July 1st, 1973, Dorothy worked very hard in obtaining national publicity to pro promote Safety Town, uh, Nation Schools, American Schools, and a Future Magazine from the Publicity, over 3,000 inquiries have been received, oh, only 500 sets of books were printed, consequently in mid-March a second printing was ordered by Dorothy. However, however, various circumstances at the H Highway Safety Foundation caused delay of the second printing. Considering all areas of the Highway Safety Foundation, I suggested to Dorothy that I felt it would be best for her to see if she could obtain funds other than from HSF to operate her National Safety Town Center. I personally recommend names of people for her to contact in obtaining financial support. Because of the circumstances that occurred at HF, HSF, Dorothy was placed in a very unusual situation. That's a very mild understatement. She had national publicity as well as national corporation, Wayne Corporation, already involved with her program and certainly could not drop the program or the center. I personally have and will continue to strongly endorse Safe Town concept in the National Safety Town Center that she is promoting. <clears throat> when Dorothy approached me as Executive Vice President of HSS about Safety Town and National Safety Town Center, I was very interested. Her concern was getting a national supporter to help communities establish. I informed her at her initial meeting that pending a successful telethon, she would then become an employee of HSF as of July 1st, 1974. However, since the telethon was canceled, we were unable to follow through on this agreement. I might add that Dorothy, the Safety Town Program, and the National Safety Town Center were all very instrumental in the HSF obtaining permission from theater authorities to be granted a telethon. I wish Dorothy the best of luck in her endeavor and sincerely hope you can and somehow assist Dorothy in the National Safety Town Center in any way possible. Her program is of utmost importance. I consider it a valuable asset through the publicity and promotional work she did, HSF received much national exposure. And uh, some of these lines, I want to go through and look through some of these videos and take out some of these important lines um, and put them all together in a nice, nice short video. We'll do that later. Okay, this is what happened in September 4th, 1974. Again, I have publications at home, but this is uh, one of the ones in the Wall Street Journal, and it's appeared in several national publications. Highway Safety Foundation confirms 
$4.8 million debt Ernst & Ernst to pay it. And this was in the, again, this was the uh, Wall Street Journal publication. So consequently, when I went out to people and asked them for funding for Safety Town, and then they saw on the back of my books that I was sponsored by Highway Safety Foundation, and they just read that Highway Safety Foundation was going belly up, I could not get any financial support. Okay, that's the story of that particular situation. We'll move that one out of the way and start on with another file now. Now, this is titled Telethon Information. Okay, <clears throat> this is just, again, some of the, the major um, letters and memos and, and pamphlets we had to put together for the telethon. It says, Operation Schedule for 1974 Telethon, Responsibilities of Partici Participating Personnel. Okay, this directive defines the responsibility of participating telethon personnel who are financially compensated by HSF for their professional skills in planning and organizing and developing the telethon. Okay, and it had all the names of all the different people on here. Owen Heaston and Ed Feltz, George Taylor, Clayton Long, Herb Lanker, Dorothy Schlad. Okay, now here were some of my responsibilities for the telethon. To obtain an area that can be made operational to depict safety town operation on film for appeals during the telethon. Requirements would be to have safety town instructors and safety town children. I had to have this complete by January 21st of 74. Finalize, number two, finalizing a written script submitted to Earl Deems for appeals pertaining to safety town and child safety. Completion date was February 15th on that. Number three, I had to have a complete set of instructional guides and safety town pamphlets ready for distribution to all telethon committees and chapters as they are developed. Completion date as soon as printing allows. Number four, to work with preliminary con con contacts prior to January 31st regarding telethon committees and chapter development. Five, to assist Herb Lanker and Mrs. Orfer in, in the development of the Cleveland chapter. Completion date none at this time. Number six, to immediately start development in the Miami West Palm Beach area of chapters, telethon committees. Number six, I didn't mind that too much. Seven, other participations as, as directed from the executive office. Okay? And then other people, and I'm just going to give out some of these names real quick that were involved. Earl Deems was with the Motion Picture Company. Stan Fields, Bill Warden was with the PR Company in Florida. Dave Steinberg, a PR Company on the West Coast. Norm Kimball. Joe Grant and Walter Mason. Walter Mason was uh, Sammy Davis's close right-hand man. Um, John Fitzpatrick was with the driver training school. And here we had a chart of everybody responding to everybody. Okay. And in there it said who was to do what. Direct mailing fundraising program, how to handle direct mailing, what we would do in January, February, March, May, all this put together. Now, one of the things we were going to do is, uh, this is a public relations proposal for joint participation of Heinz, H.J. Heinz and the Highway Safety Foundation, featuring a Safety Town Starter Kit. And I believe it was going to be called the Six Pack for Safety. It's going to be six baby food jars, um, or six baby food cans, or whatever, and have some type of safety message and information about on the on the on the six pack container of how to send for information on start a safety town. Okay, now this is information that I prepared on how to uh, on this proposal. Central to this proposal uh, is the synest. <coughs> synthesis of d dual public relations objectives into a, si <coughs> in a single promotional project. Sorry, a mutual benefit to the participants of H.J. Hines and Highway Safety Foundation. The starter kit uh, with a credible community project and subsequent consumer sales. The 
project promotes highway safety, t uh, highway safety foundation safety town program, and also H. J. Hines and the Highway Safety Foundation. And it just goes on to explain the benefits to Highway Safety Foundation, the benefits to the H. J. Hines company. And here is a sample TV promotional advertisement. Seeing a distinguished a distinguished executive from H. J. Hines sitting at a large table, setting is dignified, maximizing the impression that this man is, is a responsible, community-minded official for a very reputable company. Camera, we, I had to do all this. Camera closes in on executive again, speaking, introducing himself. And his dialogue would be something to the effect. For years, H. J. Hines has been marketing a safe, wholesome line of baby products for in, infant consumers. We are proud of our baby products and grateful to the mothers who have shown their confidence in our products by purchasing them. Recently, our marketing people began thinking, how can we ensure all our infant consumers grow up to be adult consumers? Obviously, we can't tell a baby that if, if he likes our product, he should remember that when he becomes an adult. But reviewing our sales history, we finally decided that the name H.J. Hines is pretty much a household word, word anyway. Then we heard about the Highway Safety Town and its work helping introduce groups Start Safety Town where preschool children are taught about traffic safety through interesting songs and games and role-playing situations. After hearing how many young children are injured or killed each year in traffic, we decided the best way we can be sure baby consumers will continue buying our products as adults is by working with the Highway Safety Foundation to be sure babies have the chance to grow up into adulthood. So the H.J. Hines Company and Highway Safety Foundation are jointly offering a Safety Town Starter Kit to help any community group start one of these charming Safety Town programs where children in the city may learn about safety. The camera, the film segment shows singing Let the Ball Roll, second se segment with children riding their tricycles, their little cars through Mansfield Safety Town, camera returns to the executive, and so forth and so on. Uh, Wrote, wrote the script for that H.J. Hines promotion. Okay. Uh, preliminary post proposal of services to Cedar Point. We were going to do uh, some filming of our instructors uh, at an appreciation party at Cedar Point and tie that into it. Now, this is the approximate schedule of viewing Safety Town Appeals. This took, I remember this was a, let's see, this started on Saturday at 10 p.m. at night, and it went through the following day at 6 p.m. at night, through Sunday at 6 p.m. I can't I think it was a 30-hour telethon. I'm not too, too sure that I have to figure out the time. But what I had to do is figure out during those times, like at 10 to 12 at night, I certainly wouldn't have anything about children out. I would have the coordinators from different states come and talk to adults on how to set up the program, how to do fundraising for Safety Town, how to do publicity and so forth. So on, on the live one shot, I was going to have Sam Lake briefly explain, explain from 10 to 12 when it opened. Um, he was going to then introduce me and then pre-tape number one, showing of the actual classes to the, to the, to the adults. Uh, to, from 12 to 2, we're going to have a parent on and a teenager and a state chairman from 2 to 4 a.m. early in the morning. Uh, we were going to have um, just maybe some filmage of Safety Town, uh, nothing really that live, and again, some more teenager, uh, some more parents and uh, coordinators from local communities. From 4 to 6 a.m., we're going to have continuation of the movie, different uh, portions of Safety Town, what they would be doing. 6 to 8 a.m. we were going to show, because kids would start getting up about 6, 7 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning, we were going to show some of the Clancy video. From 8 to 10, we were going to actually have Children Live in New York, uh, actually putting them through the Safety Town, and again, they talked about having Ronald McDonald be a part of this with Clancy. Um, adding some some fun thing to it. Ronald might do something wrong, like walk, walk in the middle of the street, and Clancy would say, no, you have to stop your feet and walk on a crosswalk. 
Uh, then uh, from 2 to 3, uh, we were, uh, from 10 to 12, I'm sorry, we're going to have Sammy sing songs with the children, actually teaching them on stage. Uh, they'd be sitting on stage. Sammy would be working with them and uh, teaching them uh, some safety songs. From 12 to 2, uh, we were going to have, again, more parents and more uh, talk to interview some children in the afternoon because children like would still be watching. And from two to four, we were going to have um, parents and teenagers and uh, a mixture. And the same thing to six o'clock. So I had to sit and I wrote the 20, almost 30 hours of telethon script time. And Safe to Town Appeals. There's exactly, there's exactly how it's broken down, what we were going to do. Okay. Uh, for example, we have three teenagers who were safe town ex uh, instructors explain how Safety Town not only helped them to learn about safety for children, but how it helped them become safer drivers and safety, safety individuals in general. Okay. Lots and lots and lots of work. Okay, here's the presentation by the Sammy Davis, presentation of the Sammy Davis Telethon for the Highway Safety Foundation to the Ronald McDonald, to, to McDonald Corporation. Okay. Uh, this is, again, for them to be involved in the Highway Safety Telethon. And here it is, a joint public, public relations proposal for joint project of McDonald's and Highway Safety Foundation, Telephone. Ronald McDonald Goes to Safety Town was the name of it. Okay, and there we are with the promoting the National Safety Town Center and furthering the child safety education objection of the foundation. There we go. Full shot of Ronald Safety Town visible in the background. Hi, boys and girls, I'm Ronald McDonald. Ronald explains that he will be at various McDonald restaurants during National Safety Town Week. All kinds of good stuff. I'm just reading bits and pieces. So. But that's what was going to be. A special note to all telethon person, personnel, the proper name to use for the telethon will be Sammy Davis, Jr. Highway Safety Foundation Telethon. This was done on March 6, 1974. Publicity outline, this is a big one. This was a real large one. Uh, I didn't work, I worked a little on this, but this was a joint effort of uh, a lot of people because it covered not just Safety Town, but all the other aspects of the Highway Safety Foundation, the programs. And this was the, um, we had to send this out to all the TV station managers. They had to fill out the forms. Uh, what time the viewing time, station manager, program director, producer, MC, uh, who from the Highway Safety Foundation was going to be their time schedule, location where Safety Town would be staying. Just unbelievable amount of work. Satellite cities were, would be going to. Tremendous, tremendous amount of work. Some of this I have not seen. You're going to have to bear with me on this for, okay. Okay, have children playing Safety Town at home, either in their playrooms or recreation. Interview several parents. Again, this was part of what we were going to add, probably my notes, what I was going to add in there. And this is uh, just an updated note on the publicity. Okay, so we're getting down now to the... To the, uh, oh, down to the end units here, I guess. <coughs> this is a very nice picture of Sammy Davis. I Again, I hadn't seen this one before. I'm going to make some copies of this. Isn't that great? It's all about safety time. Dear friends, how many times have you heard it said that today's kids are wild or radical or just don't care? Well, at Safety Town, you'll be working with kids that are living proof that these remarks just aren't true. These teenage instructors have volunteered because they do care, and it's going to be up to you to help them. So, 
so they'll know that adults appreciate every constructive thing they do. In a sense, you'll be, you'll be to them what they're going to be to the preschool children in the Safety Town program, someone to look to for guidance and encouragement. They'll make mistakes, but it may be because they just weren't sure what to do. So give them all the help you can when they're having trouble and make sure they know it when they do something right. The way you train them will be an example of the way you want them to handle the preschool children during safety time. If you get it together for them, they'll get it together for your safety time program. Peace, love, and togetherness. Sammy Davis, Jr. This was going to be uh, on the inside of one of the Highway Safety Foundation, of one of my books for the teenagers. Excellent, excellent. Okay, I think uh, there's another little pamphlet from the Highway Safety Foundation. Open it up. Of course, that's a good way to get attention with the stretcher. And then here's the early childhood safety training. And then there's Sammy on the back. Okay, and here's the bigger one. Actually, it's the same picture, only they went from a softer to a hard cover in different coloring. Okay. That's a shame. I don't think anyone else has this information about Sammy Davis Jr. and what he did for highway safety years ago, and I just feel it should be put together in a nice video, and also I'd like to write a nice little book about it um, and, and really publicize this. I really want to work on this. Okay, here's some, this is a little bit better quality pictures. And there's early childhood training again for us on Safety Town. And this is the research and accident. And then there's a nice picture of Sammy. Okay, now we send out, this was our direct mailing information. Again, a nice letter from Sammy Davis, Jr. Okay, nice, colorful. We added the blue instead of the black because we were told that when executives um, get lots of mail, black and white, on their desks, they sort of go by, but if it's a different color, red or something, they will pick it up more easily. So that's what we want with that. And it says, I am deeply grateful for, the, for your past gift to the Highway Safety Foundation. This gratitude is not only mine, but of course the children in safety towns across the nation. Thank you. Uh, across the nation, thank you. And um, goes on to ask for for a donation. And here is the envelope that we sent in there with it. Uh, send your gift today, so that one more child or adult will needlessly be will not needlessly be maimed or killed on the highway. Please contribute as much as you can. Yes, Sammy, I do care about safety in five, ten, twenty-five, fifty, hundred, and two hundred fifty dollars up to a thousand dollars. Okay, and there's a nice little message on there from Sammy Davis Jr. And this was sent from the Highway Safety Foundation, and we sent that out to lots and lots and lots of people. Okay. And uh, these are just copies of letters we sent to various people asking them for donations. Okay. Direct mail is very difficult. We had a direct mailing list of, uh, I think they obtained the list like from people from, um, um, I would say the Rotary Clubs and different members of that type, and then sent them uh, thousands of letters, thousands of letters went out. Okay, now that concludes the, basically, I would say the majority of the information, maybe there's the majority of information that was involved for the two year, almost two year period of the affiliation with the Ohio Department of Highway Safety and the Highway Safety Foundation in the 73, 74 years and what we had to go through with that. But 
those situations, not with that situation, but with those situations. Okay, now we're going to get back. You have to remember while I was doing that, I was still, that was only three days a week. I still had to work two days a week for the State Department, okay? Um, and it was difficult because I couldn't work like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for one and then Thursday, Friday for the other. I'd work maybe Monday here and Monday for the Safety Town with the Highway Safety Foundation. Tuesday I'd have to go on the road depending on what the State Department had lined up for me to do. Now, one of the questions that has been often asked of me through the years is, has there ever been an evaluation of Safety Town uh, on the effectiveness of the program? Now, I never, I think I've talked about this before on the video number one, that was my concern because this is an education program and I didn't want to get it in a statistical category. But uh, in 1973, a young man by the name of Nicholas A. Adesso, a student at um, University of Illinois, contacted me, and he wanted to do an evaluation of the program in that area. And I said, fine, this is for his thesis, submitted in partial for fulfillment of the requirements for the degree of Master of Science in Health Education in the Graduate College of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, 1974, is when he submitted this. <clears throat> now, and I don't want to go into a lot of it, but uh, evaluation of the Champaign-Urbana Safety Town program. He just did that one program. Now, let me see. I think I have some. It does acknowledgments. Um, some of the things he talked about was the problem, statement of the problem, specific problem, definition of terms, basic assumption, uh, significance of the study, research, hypotheses, review of the literature, behavioral characteristics of the child, need and objectives of child safety programs, research, education, publicity, evaluation, methods and procedures of research, location of study, selection of subjects, evaluation materials employed, experimental procedures, statistical treatment, collection of recording and recording of data. Uh, so he really went through the, the Safety Town curriculum letters and so forth. And he went through a lot there is just, um, oh, I'm sure he's got, uh, I don't know, I'll go through, go through this as a definition of terms, but he had them classified as uh, Behavioral characteristics of the child. I don't know how what what charts are used on that, but there are a few things that he has. Number a chart here. Number of boys and girls walking or running during approach and recording as as observing. Now I don't know where they were running and walking. If this was in the street or in Safety Town or where, but number of boys and girls who looked for traffic in relationship to approach rate and stopping at the turf. Curb. I don't know if this was before and after, and that's probably what he has lined out here. Uh, here's something I have. It says, Needs and Objectives of Child Safety Program. In a paper released by the Home Department of the National Safety Council, the needs and objectives of child safety programs have been outlined. They are as follows. Research, educational programs, publicity, evaluation. Okay. And that's all they did. Model preschool programs, learning to cope with traffic problems, of our modern society can be accomplished through educational processes designed to develop individuals who will make worthwhile contributions to a demonstrate democratic society by using our highway safe, safely and efficiently. So those are some of them. I really didn't, um, as I said, put a lot of stock in any type of statistical information like this because, simply because, having worked with these children, having them come that first day not knowing their name, address, and phone number, not knowing how to stop their feet, not knowing how to stop and turn left, right, left, not knowing how to do all this, how to pick up their toys safely, wh why to put their toys away, why not to play with matches and fires, and all this demonstrated. I mean, it was so such a, a simple, common sense thing to me that you would teach this to children. They, they don't learn by osmosis. There's no button there that would as soon as they would get near a fire, that would release the recording and say, now don't get near that fire, it could burn you, it could do this, and do those types of things. So, uh, 
I, I saw no real re relevance to this. Of course, the political people in the, and many of the people in the, in the local communities, the city halls, the traffic engineers, and all wanted to see this. And I said, wait a minute, these children aren't even capable of doing this. All we're doing is introducing, just as we introduce the math, English, history, all other subjects. We don't expect them to go out and, and be a, a history teacher after 20 hours of, of history, nor did I expect them to go out and handle all these adult situations in the world of traffic safety when they were four and five years of age. So that was my um, reason of not spending a lot of time with research things. I never, this, I never even released this to anybody uh, other than just having it here. People ask me if we had research studies done, and I suggest and it's been proven, and if you went through this, you would find that, yes, there's a significant uh, difference between children who attended and children who did not attend based on his criteria. Okay, so that, um, that was this study. I'm glad he did it. It'll be in our museum, but I didn't want to do any more, spend any more time on that. Okay. Now, uh, after I left the Highway Safety Foundation, of course not by choice, but because it dissolved, uh, Pete O'Grady, in addition to uh, John Butler said, writing a letter to him it may concern a recommendation letter, Pete O'Grady did likewise for me, which I was most appreciative. And uh, uh, just to give you some idea, again, from 1937 to 1967, there were approximately 20 safety towns in operation. From 1968 to 1974, there are approximately 150 safety towns in operation. And Pete will, wrote, why this rapid increase? Many feel it's because in 1968, when Dorothy began her one-lady drive to promote the program, people knew, needed and were asking for detailed information. Plus, like any other product, safety had to be sold. People have to be stimulated, and most importantly, must be, and you must involve the people. After this is done, you must give people recognition, something which we don't do enough in our fast-moving society of today. Sounds like 1990 as well as 1970. <clears throat> also, people like personal assistance. These, then, are the things that have created a tremendous interest in Safety Town. Dorothy gives credit to the people in each local community because, in her words, you are the people who put it all together. I provide the initial presentation and stimulate the interest, and they do the rest. She gives special recognition to our teenagers who spend much of, the, of their summer hours helping the young children. These teenagers are a major part of the program, and it's been an honor and privilege for me to have worked and met so many thousands of dedicated young people across our country, end of quote. So excuse me if I boast just a little, but you can see why Ohioans are proud of Dorothy. As director of the National Safety Town Center, she will continue to share her wealth of knowledge that she has accru accrued through the years with you to help your children. To many, she is referred to as Mrs. Safety Town. So if you not, have not met Dorothy personally be prepared, whether it's at a PTA convention, on the tennis court, playing bridge, in a hotel lobby, on a plane, anywhere, wherever she goes, Safety Town ends up being a major topic of discussion. Her enthusiasm is contagious, and as a reporter from a national magazine once said, the most impressive and best-selling point of the program, Eugene O'Grady. Very nice letter. Thank you, Pete. You were a joy to work with. Joy to work with. I think uh, somewhere I have a response to this letter. This is the letter I sent to some of these things, as I said, are mixed up, but that's the purpose of doing this. We'll, re we'll watch this and then rewrite this and, and insert things where they belong. That's why I'm giving the dates on so many of these things. February 2nd, 1974. This is a letter I wrote to Mrs. Nixon, and I think somewhere along the way we read the response to that. Dear Mrs. Nixon, your interest in recognizing volunteer work done by our teenagers prompts me to bring to your attention the action of a large group of teenagers in northeastern Ohio. These teenagers volunteer to instruct pre-kindergarten children ages 4 to 6 and 
in the field of safety through a program called Safety Town. Their duties involve not only assisting with the teaching aspect, but also applying the personal attribute of being an understanding patient friend. As the program operates during the summer months, these teenagers choose to forego normal teenage summer recreation. Safety Town is a miniature town where children learn safety by actual participation. This includes pedestrian, motorist, fire, bicycle, stranger, medicine, water. This is at a time when we didn't even, we were still using motorist and pedestrian. I changed it to driver and walker. <clears throat> As teacher and director and founder of the Bedford Safety Town for six years and chairman and founder of Northeast Ohio Safety Towns for two years, I feel teaching Safety Town at this age is invaluable. Not only do these children learn how they can protect themselves and possibly save their lives at their present age, but also by applying these rules during their childhood, they will become safety conscious conscious, responsible adults. Although this program is set up to educate the children, it also educates the parents since they become indirectly involved by observing their children on Safety Town and through printed material sent home with the children. In 1969, over 400 te teenagers instructed 6,000 children in this area. I feel there would be no finer way of recognizing the unselfish and important contributions these teenagers have made to their communities than by affording them the opportunity of meeting and receiving some national recognition for their efforts. This is particularly important today when all too often we only read about the teenagers who are protesting, using drugs, and having little or no respect for authority, detracting from rather than contributing to our society. It is my sincere hope you could find a few moments in what I am sure must be an extremely busy schedule to meet and congratulate a representative group of approximately 40 of these teenagers. Uh, as I said, I think I read this before, and I read the response from it uh, as well. Okay. It's never too early. This was in the um, Reno, Nevada article. This was United Press International release, uh, February 25, 1974. Dorothy Schlad shows a preschooler the dangers of walking into the street between parked cars. And there's an excellent article. What I did is I took two regular cars. Remember the first week of Safety Town is done role playing. The second week, you do it real life situation. So we would park in the um, school parking lot. We would park preferably two uh, station wagons because they were higher. Then we would take the children in between them and show in between the two cars and show them that the driver could not see them, that they were hidden. These were the actual things that we did on Safety Town. Excellent article. March 16th, 1974. This is to Dick Barbary from Dorothy Schlad. This was, uh, I had to make a list of um, the Governor Traffic Safety Committee meetings that I had to attend and when I had to speak.